Well, a very good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us today. I hope everyone had a great long holiday weekend and you're ready to go back to work. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. I know you'll find this very valuable. Our host today is Scenic Luxury River Cruises, and our speaker is Randy Goodrich. Randy's topic is Cruising the Lower Danube with Scenic. Randy does travel agent training for both sister cruise lines, Scenic and Emerald Waterways, and is also a business development manager in many states for both cruise lines. And as always, we really appreciate the support we get from both Scenic and Emerald. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. At the end of Randy's presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. Also, at the end of the presentation, we will be giving away a $50 gift card to one lucky agent who has been paying attention during the entire webinar. I'll tell you more about the gift giveaway after the Q&A. So let's get right to all of this exciting information about sailing the Lower Danube. Welcome, Randy. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you all for participating today. Appreciate that. We're going to go through uh, scenic, but we're also going to show you uh, uh, some pictures that uh, a trip I just got off last week, uh, the Lower Danube from Bucharest to Budapest. So hopefully it'll be an education, educational opportunity to both uh, learn more about scenic, but also learn about this uh, unique itinerary. So with that, we'll move forward. The itinerary itself, nice map here. Uh, we actually started in Bucharest. Uh, and then went down to the Black Sea and turned around, went back up, hitting Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, a little slice of Croatia, and then ending up in Budapest, Hungary. So very, very interesting. And I'll try to give you a few of my my uh, areas of interest that uh, I picked up on the way through. First of all, let's talk about scenic, though. It's some of you obviously have heard about us, know a little bit more about us. For those that don't, we're actually 30 years old. The company started in 1986 by Glenn Maroney, uh, who still owns the company today uh, as a local tour company in Australia. Quickly expanded uh, to offering tours around the world, primarily for Australians and New Zealanders, uh, and has expanded that out to include uh, people from just about all English speaking countries in the world, uh, but predominantly from Australia, New Zealand, uh, Great Britain, and North America now. In 2008, uh, after having chartered some river cruise ships from the competition, uh, his clientele uh, really wanted him to get involved more so in river cruising and to provide a river cruise that would be in the luxury category, which at the time there really was, were none. And uh, Mr. Maroney is a very inventive, uh, kind of a futuristic type of guy, thinker, you know. And he uh, first of all said, well, if I'm gonna build ships, I want them to have balconies. So you can see this is one of our first ships, the Diamond, Scenic Diamond. The Diamond and Sapphire were our two original ships. Yeah, uh, you can see that it has all balconies on the second and third deck. He did a couple of other unique things, a very large lounge, about 25% large, larger than normal. Uh, so there'd be more public space, more eating areas, things like that. So the average cabin size is larger, but the public area is also larger. These ships will hold up to 169 people. Similar ships on the current competitors could be 180 to 200 people. So that just means uh, the cabins can be a little bit larger on our ships because uh, we have fewer of them. Today, the ships, uh, we have 13 of them in Europe and two in Southeast Asia. The ones in Europe have pretty much all look like that, uh, that picture there. Uh, the balconies have not gone away. Uh, we came up with a new concept uh, because people love the balconies, but there are times when it's cold and wet uh, in Europe, and so they wanted to have. Uh, an enclosure. So these are actually all weather balconies. You can raise and lower the, the outer window. I'll show you uh, specifically how that works in a minute. <laughs> but it's very unique, very popular. Uh, 
uh, makes the rooms feel a lot larger and uh, certainly gives you a great opportunity to enjoy the ambiance on these rivers. So I mentioned our cabins, uh, our ships have 169 passengers. There's one single cabin, which is a balcony cabin on deck two. Um, and we have uh, the ships in Europe, there's two in Asia. They're gonna be a little bit different. I'll show you a picture of those. We have the new scenic eclipse ocean ship coming out in 2018. So we continue to expand in a uh, nice orderly fashion, uh, our fleet and now getting into the ocean cruising as well. So here's a tip, this is a ship that's on the Mekong. Uh, this is all one bedroom suites, uh, different than our European uh, ships. And the balconies we have, uh, typically here, you're gonna close the balcony because it's too darn hot and muggy. So the air conditioning will come on, but you still enjoy the ambiance of those balconies. Beautiful ships, real game changer, very high end luxury uh, experience for your clients both on the Mekong and on the Irrawaddy. One thing that's unique with uh, Scenic is that we are truly all-inclusive. We call it all-inclusive to the nth degree. Uh, lots of uh, lines say they're all-inclusive because they provide at least a little bit of something, like maybe beer and wine at lunch and dinner, whereas we provide beer, wine, and spirits anytime, anywhere they want it. So that's the nth degree example. Uh, but just to run down real quick, transfers before and after the cruise, as long as we know when your clients are coming in and when they're leaving, we'll arrange those. All meals, six dining choices on board, we'll go through that later. Uh, all kinds of drinks that they want, uh, both uh, at the bar, uh, during the meals, in the room there's a mini bar, and there's a butler that can take care of their special orders. So there are butlers for all cabins, not just the most expensive suites but even the least expensive cabins have a butler assigned to them. Basically, it's your own personal concierge. Um, as I mentioned, balconies, we call them the sun lounge. And then the red, red area is really the most important area of a river cruise, and that is what we do on land. Uh, we are a tour company, so we have a lot of experience in these locations, and so we give people a choice of different excursions each day that are included in the price. So instead of just having one city tour or whatever, you have a choice of two or three, four different things that you can you can choose from to do. We call those free choice. We also offer typically once a week a scenic and rich, once in a lifetime private event for our, our people. And we all have also have a sundowner, which is an afternoon uh, cocktail party. And I'll show you uh, where we did that on our trip. And then uh, the proprietary tailor-made GPS devices. I'll show you more about those later. Very unique, very popular. And finally, e-bikes instead of regular bikes. They're electronic assist, so more, pe more people can enjoy those. Of course, all tips and gratuities are prepaid and included. Wi-Fi throughout the ship, entertainment, uh, both uh, our own entertainer as well as bringing entertainment on board the ship uh, when it's possible. We have a laundry concierge, so uh, they can get their laundry done and uh, actually people in the, on the top deck, on the diamond deck, uh, get to have uh, pressing done during the week as well, two garments a day. And finally, a scenic cruise guarantee. I'll talk about that later, but it's a very, very uh, industry changing uh, first time uh, anybody's done this in the industry that deals with high water, low water issues and some others. This is a chart some of you may have seen before done by rivercruiseadvisor.com. You can go to that website and get this chart and be updated, uh, but Scenic does set the bar as far as the most all-inclusive of all the river cruise companies. Right above that blue line is Scenic, and right above that is Emerald Waterways. Emerald is our four-star deluxe river cruise uh, brand, which has received the Cruise Critic most uh, best value in river cruise award the last two years. It's got more check marks than the other deluxe brands, uh, so they include more, like tips and gratuities and transfers. Here's a picture of the Sun Lounge, the balcony. So you can see it is a balcony. Uh, you can see the couple there standing out. But that window, there's actually two panes there. You can see it in the right-hand picture and the button on the wall. If it starts to get chilly or rainy or whatever, or in Southeast Asia, too hot, you simply push the button and close it. But you can stay out there and enjoy that beautiful ambiance, just cruising the rivers, 
something that just is just fantastic to do. Talk about staterooms for a second. Uh, there are several categories. Your lowest price staterooms are your D and E down at the first deck. Uh, they're 160 square feet, bigger than most other ships offer for that category. And then we, we jump up on the second and third deck to our balcony suites. So you can see the balcony out there. You can see the beautiful, uh, the very soft colors. We want you to focus on the outside uh, view, not so much the inside. So make it pretty, pretty neutral colors. Uh, these categories will change in size from 205 square feet to 250 square feet. That would be a junior suite, but they all basically look the same. They're just wider. <clears throat> so there's a regular balcony suite, 205 square feet. There's a deluxe is 225 square feet. So that room between the bed and the stool there is going to be wider. And then the junior suite is 250 square feet. So very, very lovely rooms. That's the majority of the cabins on board the ship. Uh, the bathrooms are, are amazing. I mean, I just experienced it again. And I'm amazed every time about the water pressure and the shower in particular. Uh, it's just amazing. You don't get that kind of water pressure in the nicest hotels I stay in. Uh, in the bigger suites, uh, the, some of the junior suites, the royal suites, the royal panorama, you will have a bathtub as well as a shower. And there's plenty of room in here to store your goodies. Uh, you got the L'Occitane uh, oceans and shampoos, things like that. Lower picture, lower right picture is one of our royal suites. There's typically four of these on a ship. They're lovely. They have their own separate sitting area. Uh, they're midship typically. Uh, the newer ships we built the last few years, uh, they're a little bit larger at 360 square feet. Then you've got the Royal Panorama Suite. Uh, this is lovely. It's in the back of the ship. There's two of them. And so they have kind of a 180 degree view on the side balcony there you can look out and then the, there's a huge uh, a panorama window in the back where you can see straight out the back and, and around so they come with some extra services uh, you have the butler but you have the uh, enhanced uh, furnishings it's a separated one bedroom on the newer ships and the other ships it's all one room uh, just just really lovely but also very hard to get these these sell quickly Let's talk about dining real quick crystal dining room uh, is our primary dining room, which can hold everybody on board at one seating if needed, but it's never that busy because one, uh, we have the other dining choices, and two, uh, we don't require everybody to show up at the same time. So if dinner starts at 7 and you can show up at 8, 8.30 and still uh, have plenty of food and, and sitting and ample seating. Very nice uh, view up outside real close to the water. It's just makes for a nice atmosphere. Uh, another dining choice is Portobello's, or in France, with our French sailings, it's called L'Amour. The couple's uh, there on the right, uh, that they're sitting in Portobello's. Uh, it's up above, it's in the back of the lounge. In fact, if you look at the picture on the lower right, uh, that is the lounge, and looking forward towards the front of the ship, uh, that area, as far as you can see with, this, with the chairs and whatnot, that is made up each afternoon into Portobello's or L'Amour seating for around 30, 32 passengers. Each, each uh, just contact your butler or the front desk and request which night, and they'll try to accommodate that. Seating for, for tables of two, four, six, eight, typically. River Cafe, that is actually the area on the right side of the main bar. This is a kind of fast uh, food area, so you can get in, get something to eat pretty quick, or pack it up in a picnic lunch and take it out. Uh, wonderful stuff. The group tends to be a little bit more healthy uh, than perhaps uh, sitting at going through the uh, buffet area. So it's buffet for breakfast and lunch with uh, some menu items you can order as well. And then dinners are full menu, a la carte items. The table to read, uh, I'll show you in a minute, a uh, picture of that, I believe. That's a private uh, seating, kind of like a captain's table on an ocean ship. So it would take uh, somewhere around uh, 12 to 14 people per night. Uh, since we can't take everybody on board, it's reserved for the people on the top deck, the diamond deck. They'll get a personal invitation uh, from the ship uh, for that evening that they get to go. Uh, River Cafe I went through, Al Fresco is dining on the deck, which we did. You'll see that uh, later on. 
and all beverages are included and 24 hour room service. So here's some shots I just took last week, uh, some of these, not all of them, but there you can see the beautiful dining room, uh, very, very nice. And then in the middle is where the buffet area is. That's the table to read. Uh, this, in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, table of 10 being set up. That's a six course wine pairing dinner. Very, very nice. Uh, takes an hour and a half or so to go through the entire courses and wine pairings and description of the wine and why they chose that, etc. It's very, very elaborate, very nice. Meal is a fantastic. There's a picture of Portobello down in the lower left where you can see that you can because you're a little bit higher above the dining room, you can be looking right out at some beautiful scenery. Or you can be up on the deck there with the Budapest Parliament building in the background, having a light lunch. And that's uh, River Cafe. You can see just kind of the light, quick uh, food preparations you can get for both early breakfast as well as lunch, which pretty much most of the day there's something there to eat. <clears throat> Panorama Lounge, that's where everybody hangs out. A lot of couches, comfortable chairs. Uh, what I love, and I get a lot of response from other people uh, about cruising on Scenic, as well as our sister's company, Emerald, is the international clientele. So you end up getting, being your clients where have the opportunity to create friendships with people from Australia, and New Zealand, South Africa, England, Ireland, Scotland, of course, North America. Uh, we had a group of people from the Philippines on board. Uh, so it, it's just a real uh, engaging type of atmosphere. And the staff people there too uh, help that. They want to know who you are right away and what you'd like to drink, et cetera. So you see it's a very, very uh, nice area. I get the question sometimes, do we have dancing? Yep, there's the dance floor. And people can get up and hoot and holler a little bit. We did get the award this last year as the best river cruise line shore excursion programs. That's because of our multiple shore excursions, our GPS device, our e-bikes, things like that. So let's go through some of that. So this, our cruise started in Bucharest, uh, the Bucharest capital of Romania. Uh, there's the parliament building. Uh, it was the second largest building in the world, uh, the Pentagon being the largest. A little bit nuts uh, country. This uh, has as many issues uh, financially and whatnot uh, to have a building this size, but they figured they needed to complete it. Their dictator started it with his uh, own reasons for doing that, but they did he'll go ahead and complete it. It's a beautiful building inside and out. Uh, really kind of looks out over the entire city. We did go to the historical museum there. It's obviously this part of the world that tremendous amount of history as it kind of was the bridge between Asia and Europe uh, when you go through coming across from Turkey. So that, that picture of the Historical Museum, those little uh, sword knife type items there are about around 5,000 years old. So pretty interesting place in that perspective. Picture down at the bottom, that was just our opening ceremony, our, our welcome dinner at the Hilton Hotel, which uh, FNA which is our home hotel there where everybody kind of meets. It's a good idea for them to come in a day or two early. There's a lot to see in Bucharest. Uh, but it's a beautiful hotel, beautiful room, and, and our cruise director, Frank, uh, gave us kind of a rundown on what to expect and what the, what the uh, itinerary was for the next day. So we went out to the Black Sea. Uh, we were on the scenic Jade, beautiful ship. Uh, on the way out, was, we actually took the cruise down to Silistra, the town of Silistra, and, uh, and then took a bus over to Varna, which is actually a resort, which is on the uh, Black Sea. So uh, on the way, you see these huge fields. I mean, just tons and tons, acres and acres, as far as you can see, of wheat fields, canola, things like that, uh, which really is a is a huge importance to their economy. Uh, you can see the picture of downtown Barna there where the Black Sea, which is not black, uh, actually a beautiful blue color, it's called the Black Sea because it's a very dangerous sea. There are uh, several different types of tidal currents 
weather gets a little bad and there's been many ships uh, go to the bottom. So they picked up the ominous name, the Black Sea. The beautiful beaches, as you can see, there I am in the Black Sea. Uh, hoop to do, I made it. And uh, then we had a, got back on board the ship and had these young people uh, doing a beautiful uh, ballet and uh, dance uh, recital type thing for us. It was, it was quite charming. We then went into Bulgaria. Uh, now Bulgaria's had more problems than the other countries as far as getting their economy back up and running after a decade or two of communism. But this uh, this is the old capital here that we're looking at uh, of Bulgaria. It's uh, Veliko Tarnova, uh, really quite charming place. It, it was about a two two and a half hour bus ride to get here. In between, there's not much of anything. There's fields and small towns, villages. Um, but it was a charming place. Uh, we went shopping there. Uh, great little arts and crafts areas. And then we went up to the old village, which was on top of the hill, as far as you can see in the upper picture, uh, Arbanazi, and uh, into this old church uh, where they, they sang some songs for us and whatnot. It was a very, very moving experience. These churches are uh, close to a thousand years old plus. Uh, very interesting. Then along the way, you see these stork nests. So that seems to be really popular. People get to stop the bus once in a while. Everybody take a picture of the stork. They come back every year to the same place uh, with the same mate. Quite interesting. Then one of the highlights of the uh, entire sailing is going through the gorge of the lower Danube called Lion's Gate. Fabulous, uh, beautiful cruise that day. After a couple of days of touring, we were able to stay on board the ship all day long. Uh, you see the weather is quite nice. You see these villages as we go by them. Uh, and this river down here, the gates, uh, that the river did not used to be navigable because the gates, uh, the, the water is too rapid going through there. It's really a narrow, you'll see it in a minute, how narrow it is. Um, but what's really cool with scenic is when you're cruising like this and you see all these things, we have the scenic tailor made. That's a GPS device, there's a picture of it on the left there. It's got several functions. So. One is a voice guide. That's if you're on a tour. That's how you listen to channel one to your tour guide. Uh, you also have self-guided tours if you want to walk ashore on your own. Uh, but then there's river guides. So this is pictures are I have river guide on. River guide is telling me where we are on the river now. And I can listen to little narrations, little vignettes of different areas telling me the history and whatnot. And there's a map there to show me exactly where we are. And that real curvy area is where we're going to go through the Iron Gates. So here's the gorge going through it after going through. That's, this was actually the picture on the upper left was actually a double dam. I think it's the first time I've been through one of those, uh, at least while I was awake. Uh, but it's you go up one uh, one lock, a double lock, one lock, uh, I think 50, 30 feet, and then you go into another lock for another 30 feet. So that's 60 foot rise. But they had to put these in at the at source of hydroelectric power, but also so that you could make this uh, really tight gorge very navigable. And now, right in the middle of the gorge, one of the narrowest parts, you have uh, this carving in the stone. It's quite quite dramatic uh, of an old, uh, I'm not even sure the whole story right off the top of my head. It's, a, it's quite famous. And then you see there's a little church right there, too. But you can see how narrow that river is. It's a ton of water going down underneath there, and it's moving at a pretty good clip. So quite dramatic. We next went into Belgrade, the capital of Serbia, uh, and it's a beautiful city. Uh, we're taking pictures here. I'm up at the old fort that looks out over the city. It's gorgeous. Uh, beautiful palaces. That's one of the one of the palaces down there in the lower right. <clears throat> Uh, upper left, that's uh, Tito's uh, grave. Uh, Tito was the uh, president of Yugoslavia while it was under communism. Uh, you learn a lot about his history, and he uh, he helped the country along. There's people that like him, there's people that hate him, but uh, the, Serbia is certainly a, a step beyond some of the other countries uh, who were strictly under communism. 
had a much more dictatorial type leader. Uh, beautiful church in, right downtown uh, Belgrade. It's lovely. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this is a picture, actually, when we had our sundowners event, our afternoon cocktail party, looking straight across at the fort on the hill. Famous old fort. Just uh, was taken over by the Turks several times and taken back uh, by the Serbians and went back and forth for many centuries. So here's the sundowners, uh, as four of us enjoying the, the, the sundowners event with the fort in the background, quite a beautiful location. You know, restaurant was in a, in a floating boat type thing, beautiful. And then we came back and some of the hors d'oeuvres uh, at, the, at the sundowners came back on board the ship where they had a, a barbecue on the top deck. So their barbecues, we couldn't believe all the food, we couldn't eat everything they had. It was really great, and obviously the weather was fantastic. And then we had a local uh, Serbian band and dancers come in. It was quite entertaining. Then we went to Ulcijek, say that correctly, in Croatia. This is an area that was uh, very involved in the Bosnian War. The Serbs came over and attacked this area. You can see the the water tower with all the holes in it, quite a few of the buildings just to have bullet holes and whatnot you can see in it. So it's, it's a dramatic uh, remembrance of times past, not too long ago in the 90s. Uh, big church, a big uh, cross there right on the river uh, by the border, uh, commemorating the people that, that died in that town uh, during that Bosnian War. And then the picture of the old uh, fort where the um, the Romans first settled this area, uh, and then uh, it, it's still in, still used today for some military trainings, but mostly it's high schools and colleges within this area. Beautiful church too. We went out to the countryside and we met this fellow uh, on the upper left who was quite a character, but he had a lot of things. Uh, He's showing us here how they fish with the net, and then on the right, uh, some of his goodies. Of course, uh, you may be aware of this, uh, paprika and a lot of things like that come from this area. We then went to our lunch at this house, the Yellow House, our group did. There about 10 or 12 people in each house uh, of locals. The food was terrific, our, our particular one. She has huge gardens. They, they grow most, a lot of their own uh, vegetables and fruits, things like that. Just a unique experience. Uh, she taught, uh, she spoke very good English, and we had a very nice conversation about her lifestyle, etc. Then we got into Hungary the next day, and we saw the Magyar writers. These are famous, world famous writers. It was quite a unique experience. You can just get to see how dramatic it was. These guys get up and go, and then ride their horses around, stand up on top of them, do all sorts of crazy things. Um, that was fun. And then our last day, we arrived in Budapest. And uh, Budapest is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, in my opinion. Um, some pictures I took. Uh, we've got the, we've got the uh, actually the palace on the top. You can see the palace and the panorama over the chain bridge. Uh, the parliament building is, you can kind of see the top of it in the upper right. Uh, there's other things like the, uh, like the, uh, I've got some pictures here of Vienna too. We ended up going to Vienna, so shouldn't be in there. But Budapest, uh, the host, we stayed in the hotel, which was the Marriott, which is where I took this picture from, so you can see how spectacular it is. It's also a great location. It's not too far to the big market, which is uh, quite something that is an inside market. Uh, you talk about paprika, you got paprika all over the place there. Some more more sights to see. King Stephen Stephen the First, the beautiful statue of him up by the palace, uh, where there's this church with this gorgeous uh, roof on it made out of tiles. We did a night sail as well uh, right after we came into Budapest. Um, everything is lit up: the palaces, the churches, the monuments. It makes it quite nice. There's a picture in the lower right inside the market. That's uh, saffron, paprika. You name it, they've got everything there. Then the e-bikes, I talk a little bit about that from here to there. Here, once in a while, we had a number of different 
biking uh, optional, not optional, but included, but a choice uh, that they, people could do in some of these locations. And so there's the brand new e-bikes right there. They're really, really handy. So there's a little box underneath uh, that's the power. And so people that are want to get out and experience the bike experience, which gets you closer uh, to some areas that normally you wouldn't see in a tour. Uh, they can take these out even if they don't ride a lot. Uh, the power will give them a boost when they need it to get up a hill or just if they get tired. So more people can enjoy that experience. Uh, we also offer uh, our uh, and a free choice. So this just gives you kind of an idea of different things. I just picked the end. I had this slide already prepared. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five different things that you can do in Vienna that day you're there, plus our scenic and rich that night is a beautiful uh, private uh, Strauss Mozart type concert with ballet. Here's the tailor-made again. So you can even take these units and wander off and just start walking and it's gonna follow you along and ping you if you're coming around something that you may wanna stop and take a look at. It also helps you get back to the ship. So that's something important to people. And just to generally talk about the itineraries, don't forget Christmas markets. They're becoming more and more popular, uh, especially with Americans, uh, as the word gets out on these. So they're selling very quickly. Uh, probably have trouble finding space uh, later this year, November, even into December. Just got to warm up to the great experiences because the towns Every one of these towns along the rivers just outdo themselves with trying to have the fanciest, nicest markets. And there's a lot of hot spiced wine to keep you warm. Special features in the ship, some pictures I just took. So you can see that you know, how easy it is to go upstairs and find a comfortable chair. and Just enjoy that ambiance. It's just spectacular. It's kind of one of my favorite things to do. Just hang out. You've always got your cruise director. There's Frank, our cruise director, at his little desk next to the front desk, uh, there to help you with any questions. Our weight rooms, our exercise rooms are quite nice. You see the units are kind of set down so they don't tip over, if, not that there's any really any motion anyway. And then we do have this new machine. This is brand new. Uh, I saw it on Emerald as well as Scenic. And so instead of having to return um, keys and do all that sort of thing, you just have a little name tag and you scan it when you go in and go out so they know that you're back on the ship. Makes it quite nice. Speaking of Admiral, this, that's our four star plus band, brand, a deluxe best value in river cruise for two years in a row. So we now have seven ships in Europe uh, with Admiral. Just started one, the Liberté on the Rhone River, which I was able to go on. It's fantastic, beautiful ships, really, really quite beautiful. And uh, a new one in the Doral River. Uh, the other five are on the Rhine, Mine, and Danube. And then the Scenic Eclipse is coming out in 2018, the world's first discovery yacht. Uh, it's getting close to being sold out already. It's not even built yet. They're building it right now. It will have two helicopters and a submarine. Uh, very high end, very, very luxury, very uh, latest safety systems throughout. Uh, and very comfortable. So for your clients that are really looking for something unique, you might start to talk to them about Scenic Eclipse 18 and 19, like I said, is selling pretty quickly. Um, and we have the pre-release catalog out now. So uh, if you have somebody like that, make sure you get a get a catalog. And last but not least is uh, our River Cruise Guarantee. Uh, it's an industry first, came out with it this year. It's all about Clients being able to fully enjoy their vacation without worry about such things as high water, low water, mechanical issues, things that beyond our control that might disrupt their trip. And if that does happen and we can't resurrect the trip, they're going to miss uh, some of the, the trip because of those reasons, then we're going to reimburse them a uh, percentage of the money. And so uh, it's cash. They come back. It's not a credit. And we're just very sorry it happened. We have not yet to date had to cancel a trip, uh, but we do have the disruptions that we can't do anything about from time to time. 
<clears throat> so where you get more information on Scenic uh, is at scenicusa.com slash agent dash portal, or there's a, a link on the scenicusa.com site in the upper left. Uh, here's where you make sure your agency is registered. Uh, if you're part of a host or a larger agency, they very likely will have a registration already. You want to get that and then go in and sign up underneath them so you get the correct permission, et cetera. Uh, our sales uh, contact information, which I'll show you in a few minutes, is also here. This is also where you can order brochures. Best thing to do is go on the agent side to order the brochures, and then we'll make sure you have the, a couple of the new ones every time they come out. We don't send you boxes. Uh, we do have a competition. That's all over now. I need to update that picture, but uh, we had one for Eclipse. And then Expressbook is where our booking uh, and live availability is. It's very easy and very quick for you to find availability on specific sailings. I'll show you more about that in a minute. But before you book your first uh, or next scenic uh, booking, make sure you take the scenic specialist course. You'll earn a couple hundred dollars additional bonus commission. So it's well worth your time. As far as the booking engine itself, it's one of the easiest to work with that I've seen. Uh, but one of the challenges with River Cruises is the fact that it's uh, hard to find availability sometimes and can be kind of time consuming in your part going back and forth with the cruise line. So if you have access to this booking engine, you can go in real quick. In this case here, somebody wanted to do the Gems of the Danube uh, and they can put in a date and it quickly comes up with the sailings that currently have availability and then you would expand each one i've got these expanded at the top down at the bottom you see they're, they're not it's just a plus when you click on the plus it will then show you which cabin types so you can very quickly uh, talk to your customer who maybe want wants a junior balcony suite and you see that the sailing down at the bottom is the only one that has a junior balcony suite left you can then open it up so you can see the deck plan and, and the junior balcony suites of these two, uh, 302, 301 at the top. Um, and so those are available, so you can easily tell them where they are on the ship. If you have a couple people going, they want to be across from each other, et cetera, it makes it quite easy. Those cabins that are available have the numbers on them, the others are sold. So it's pretty typical, the pink in the back, those are the Royal Panorama suites, they're all gone. The Royal Suites, which are the gray ones, are all gone. Uh, now, this was unusual because the single cabin on deck two, 224, that kind of orange look, uh, that is available. Uh, single cabin typically goes pretty fast, so that's a good opportunity for somebody. And then your lowest price cabins are down here at the bottom. And then the, it lays out the price and everything, so it makes it quite easy for you. Uh, at this point, you can either book this cruise, grab a cabin and book it, uh, and they have two days to uh, uh, make their deposit payment of $500 per person on refundable, final payment 90 days prior to departure, uh, or you can create a quote and then send your client an email quote, uh, showing them what the cost would be, the cabin type we've selected, it doesn't take the cabin out of inventory, but gives them an idea of what the costs are, uh, a link to the complete itinerary, et cetera. It's also where you find out where our most current discounts and specials are for that particular sailings. These are very dynamic. Uh, they change quite often based on availability. So as our sailings start to fill up, these will go start to go away. Uh, so the sooner you can book uh, your clients, like right now, we're getting many, many bookings. 18 is, uh, I don't know, or what the status is, but I'm sure it's over half sold out, if not more, um, already. So you need to book ahead. Uh, again, final payments not due to the 90 days prior. So there are some incentives now for paying earlier, so pay attention to those too. If your client has any issues, then uh, we'd like to hear about those ahead of time so we can be properly prepared. If not, we'll, they'll do their best to help them while they're on the ship too. Uh, I just experienced uh, that cruise, 11-day uh, you know, cruise, and the Black Sea cruise, um, and there were people there, quite a few using canes. There was one gentleman that was pretty much confined to a wheelchair. He did have to get up and walk uh, at certain times to get on and off the ship and, and a few things, but uh, we helped him quite a bit, and uh, it was 
interesting to watch and see how that whole sequence worked. Uh, they do need to be able to walk a little bit at least. Groups, groups are a great opportunity on river cruises. It's a, it's a great experience for people. It's a group of my friends when we did the uh, uh, Bordeaux a couple years ago. We we're in the table, actually, we we're in uh, Portobello's um, there with Bordeaux, the city behind us, having a great time. But it's a really nice, because everything is done for you. I mean, it's, it's not like people have to kind of argue over what we're going to do today, where we're going to eat. You don't have to worry about what things cost because everything's included. It's just a really wonderful experience. You've got some extra, some specials going right now uh, on our cruises that are left open for 17. That's a great potential savings of a couple thousand dollars uh, more or less for your clients. Uh, so it's, it's a great time. If you have people kind of thinking about it, this is the time for them to jump in. There's a group special as well. Uh, just got this uh, today, so I threw it on here. So we will actually, uh, you can earn two TCs with 15 travelers. Normally it's 10 travelers, you get a TC, so we reduce that a little bit. So, uh, you know, get seven, seven, eight cabins, seven, eight couples going, and you've got two tour conductor credits. Uh, that's good money in your pocket or uh, however you want to spend that money. There's an additional group discount as well and some other things to highlight. So this is a uh, list of our current uh, contacts in the United States. If you're joining us from Canada, uh, everything is a little bit different up there. So you need to contact the Canadian office and you can find out more information at can uh, just email Canada at scenictours.com or go on the Canadian site, which I think is scenic scenictours.com. CA, I believe. But, um, so the only uh, little change here recently is in Southwest, Northern, Southern California, Arizona area. Then Flaherty is now uh, overseeing the scenic side, and Mark Jeanette, who was and still does for some accounts, uh, is focusing more on the Emerald side. But with that, uh, Sandy, I'll take some questions. And okay, great. Order. Thank you, Randy. I loved seeing your your own personal pictures. That was really that uh, was really great to see an actual cruise. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> they were wonderful. Um, we do have some questions. I want to uh, tell our agents that if we don't get to your question, or if you think of something after this webinar is over, Randy has left up there the um, contact information for the BDM in your area. So jot it down, and you can always email or call and uh, get get all of your questions answered. So let's get to some of our questions. Uh, is the monetary currency on board? Uh, is that the US dollar or is it the euro or something else? Uh, typically the euro. Now on this trip, uh, most of these countries uh, have joined the, the EU, but they haven't adopted the euro yet. So uh, uh, just have to be careful that you don't end up coming home with a bunch of funny currency you don't know what to do with. Uh, but the euro is pretty, uh, is typically used, some places were actually, in Budapest, they they would actually take the dollar too, but uh, the euro is the standard. And on board the ship as well, if you want to buy something in a store? Yeah, on board the ship, it's, uh, it's all euros. Okay. Uh, are there enough e-bikes aboard for everybody? We have an agent who's run into a situation where there were some um, passengers who were not able to get a bike on a riverboat. Well, we have, uh, I think it's around 30 that we have. We keep on board. Each ship's a little bit different, but uh, we keep those. and We have to have them in an area where we can charge them every night. Uh, if there's a request for more, uh, we can't always get e-bikes, but we can we can certainly call ahead and have regular bikes available. Um, so, but it doesn't seem to be a problem uh, most of the time because there's choices for things for people to do, and one day they might want to take the e-bike out, and the next day not. So, it doesn't seem to be a huge issue that I've heard. Okay. Um, is English the language on board? You mentioned quite a diversity in uh, passenger demographic. Uh, are there um, uh, mostly English all, speakers? All English. Okay. All English. You might hear the, the crew talk to each other occasionally in Hungarian or 
Romania or something, but uh, no, everything's in English. There's only one announcement, it's all English. Uh, everybody on board speaks English. Uh, so that's, so, so the, the clientele is, it's mostly from, uh, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain and North America. That's the majority of it by far. Okay, great. You mentioned that all the gratuities are uh, paid as part of the cruise fare. Does that include the um, cruise director? Yep, includes everybody. So we we actually kind of discourage uh, people going above and beyond, but they do. Uh, so you know, I just tell tell people that you know if you have abused your butler or the wine steward or something like that, and you feel a need to give them, you know, 20 euros or something. Go ahead and do it, but just don't, just be discreet about it because we don't want them to expect it and uh, we pay them a pretty handsome uh, salary, uh, which includes their tips and gratuities. Okay, we have a couple of questions about the deposit. Uh, you said it was non-refundable. If so, Is it reusable at all if someone wants to change the date to a different cruise date, even if it's in a different year? Uh, yeah, uh, it can be. It's, it, it really is. It, you just need to contact your, your BDM, uh, explain the circumstances, and we'll go to bat for you and try to make that happen. I can't guarantee it, but it typically, typically is okay. Okay. And do the scenic ships have elevators on board? Yep. Now, in scenic, the elevator... Uh, does not go to the upper deck, the top deck, of course. Uh, you don't have room for an elevator shaft there. And it does not go all the way to the bottom. The scenic ships are a little different. The emerald ships, it goes from the first floor to the third. On uh, scenic, it's kind of half, like a half level. So they have to show you to explain it to you. But anyway, it gets to... Uh, those people, if you if you're in a wheelchair or anything like that, or having trouble walking, you should, you shouldn't quite frankly be down at the bottom. You should be the best places, at least a junior suite, if not larger, so that you have uh, a little bit more room in a cabin to move around and stuff. Okay, uh, the river cruise guarantee is that already in effect for people booked for um, 2017 and 2018? And one of our agents wants a sort of thumbnail sketch of the demographics age-wise and, um, uh, you know, who, who's the typical passenger on Scenic? Your typical passenger is going to be 55 to 80, uh, maybe 85. They have to be fairly mobile, you know, to get around. These are pretty active. I figured I'd probably gain 10 pounds on this, this trip. <laughs> uh, and you're brave enough to talk about it. <laughs> I well, I, I lost two pounds. <laughs> Go figure. Wow. <laughs> and I didn't hold back, but you're pretty active. I mean, you're, you're walking. I mean, I walk more than I typically would do, um, and so you got to be fairly active. Fairly, most of them are fairly affluent. Uh, it, we had some uh, younger people. It was kind of interesting. There are some forty-some uh, olds. You can tell that I'm old. That's young to me. <laughs> um, but uh, they were there with their parents. There were two brothers with their wives, and then their parents. And it, they just had a blast. I mean, I saw them all the time. Sometimes they they spent a lot of time up in the upper deck, and they were playing cards and drinking whatever, and having a great time. And did every every shore excursion they could. So yeah. that was fun to see. I think you know the bottom line is. It's for people who are interested in, in history, especially this type of trip. You know, it's beautiful, but uh, it's not the most romantic places to go. But the history was phenomenal, and it taught all of us something different. Uh, had a little more knowledge about, you know, the effects of communism and some of the things these people have done and appreciation for how resilient they are. As many times as they've been overrun by different, for centuries, by different people. So. If people appreciate that, then age is not such a, so, so important as it is that type of interest level. And speaking of age, is there a minimum age? Would you recommend scenic for children, um, teenagers? Are there cabins that hold more than two people? No, we don't have cabins. Uh, it's either single or double. And uh, 
uh, we have a minimum age of 12. And unless they're traveling with parents or grandparents, uh, where they really want to have that experience with them, it's probably not the number one thing that kids want to do is go to churches and museums and hear about all this history and stuff. Um, but we see that starting to change a little bit. But right now, our focus is on 55 to 80 year olds um, who want to experience the history and and all that good stuff that you can on the rivers. Okay. Um, we'll take a couple of more questions. We want to leave time for the gift giveaway. So um, are there medical facilities on board the scenic ships? No, we have medical facilities on board the shore or wherever we are. We're, not, we're never very far away from a town or village. Uh, we have contact information with every, all the medical facilities. Uh, I mean, the people on board, the defibrillator, things like that uh, for emergencies. But uh, typically, it's not that, that many minutes before we're on shore and have an ambulance there if needed. OK. And what is the typical tour size? How many people? And a related question, if you are bringing a group on board, has, are there any allowances made for a private tour just for your group? Um, so the, what was the first part of the question? Uh, typical tour size. How many people in okay. typically? So the, the daily tours go out, and we'll have typically four buses. There's 160 people, so that'd be 40. Not everybody always goes. Some people want to go do their independent thing. So I don't find the buses uh, ever completely full, and they typically hold maximum 40 people. Uh, so there, I'd say on average, uh, yeah, they would run around 25, 30 people. And then if you're bringing a and group far, of 10 or 12? As far as your own group, uh, if you wanted to do your own thing, that would be up to you. If you want to make sure your group's always together, then you just need, somebody needs to kind of coordinate that, and the cruise directors will work with you on that. So we kind of had, we ended up going with the same people all the time, and because, because we decided it was a lot easier for us to remember, uh, bus two. <laughs> so we all went on <laughs> bus two all the time. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. But, but yeah, but uh, the cruise director will help you as much as they can. Okay, and last question, and again, um, if we didn't get to your question or if you think of something uh, later, then uh, I hope you've written down the name and contact information of your BDM. Um, do you know off the top of your head what the weight limit is for people who want to use one of the e-bikes? No. <laughs> okay. I've had that one before. <laughs> okay. I don't know if we have one. <laughs> They're pretty sturdy little bikes, but you know, I, I mean, I'm sure there's some limitations out there with some people, but uh, I, I haven't heard that. Okay. An extra large seat, I guess. So not as far as you know, <laughs> be the answer. Okay, well, that no. was wonderful. Thank That's, you for all that. Yeah. Were, were you gonna say something else? No, I just, no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Um, so um, let's get to our gift giveaway. We're giving away a $50 gift card on behalf of the travel professional community and our partners at Scenic Luxury River Cruises. And here's the way it's going to work. Randy is going to ask you a question. And the first correct answer I see come across my screen will be the winner. We will pass your information along and um, you will be hearing uh, about how to redeem your gift card. So this is an easy question. I just hope you guys are have fast fingers today. So Randy, go ahead and ask your question. It's a toughie, <laughs> but I did say it. What is the capital of Serbia? Okay, so type in your answer. Beautiful city. Well, we have many correct answers, so thank you to all of our agents for paying such careful <laughs> attention. Um, okay, I'm going to ask a tougher one next time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and the winner, the first correct answer I saw come across my screen is Jane Henninger. So Jane, congratulations. You are the winner of the $50 gift card and we'll be getting in touch with you to let you know how you can redeem that. Well, Randy, as always, this has been fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, and again, thank you for yep. including your personal pictures in this webinar. They really made a difference in seeing uh, what the cruise really looks like. Yep, congratulations, Jane. And thank you again to all of our agents. Our uh, host today has been Scenic Luxury River Cruises, and our speaker has been Randy Goodrich, Business Development Manager and Travel Agent Trainer. Randy, thanks again. This was great. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you all. Thank Go you. Go out and sell something. Yeah, scenic, perhaps. <laughs> Hopefully scenic. <laughs> and thank you so much to all of our agents on this webinar. We appreciate your taking time out of your day to be here. And we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.